Burials beneath churches were common around Europe during the Middle Ages and the early modernity. They were made also in Finland, which is a topic I have more thoroughly covered in an earlier post. In short, the cool, ventilated conditions under the churches favoring soft tissue wall drying explain the mummification of several remains once buried there. Probably the most famous example is the mummy of Nicolaus Rumius, an early 17th century vicar of the Kemi Paris in Finnish Lapland, who died approximately in his 70s. In 2011, the mummy was examined using computed thermography imaging, and later these results were complemented with stable isotope analysis of his nail keratin. These studies revealed information about the vicar's health, body proportions, and diet, as well as the connection between these three. Some radiological findings implied severe health impairments, such as indications of tuberculosis, which will be more closely addressed in this post. Particularly, a lesion of infectious origin that had caused two thoracic vertebrae to collapse anteriorly led to consider the possibility of tuberculosis infection. Similar spinal infections, known as Spots disease, are a typical finding in skeletal tuberculosis. Skeletal form of the disease is not very common, but nearly half of the cases manifest in the spine. Calcifications were encountered also inside the scrotum. They may sometimes be associated with genitourinary tuberculosis. Additionally, calcified masses were located bilaterally in the vicar's chest, more precisely, in both his nipples. They could be explained by tuberculous breast infection, although the condition is currently extremely rare. It may, however, have been less so in the past conditions lacking any effective medical care. What is more, the scans also revealed a radiobug spot next to trachea. This may be a calcified thoracic lymph node, which are a common occurrence, especially in pulmonary tuberculosis. In absence of most lung tissues, considering the pulmonary involvement is perhaps unwise, as extrapulmonary infections may occur separately. Moreover, rather than being a lesion, this spot may even have been caused by postmortem changes. Tuberculosis, however, is just one explanation to the mentioned findings. The thoracic lesion may be caused by other infectious pathogens. Suitable candidates may be the staphylococci, and in some parts of the globe, although not in the 17th century Lapland, for example certain species of fungus may cause similar lesions. Even another spinal condition, diffuse idiopathic skeletal hyperostosis, of which the vicar also suffered and which will be considered in a later post, may have caused a lesion. It predisposes to fractures in the spine that may sometimes resemble pathogen-induced lesions. Scrotal calculi are not a very unusual finding and may result from several other conditions ranging from benign ailments or traumas to malignancies. The latter, however, is an unlikely cause given the vicar's mature age. Cancers of testes are more typical in younger men. Although they currently are often curable, in absence of modern treatment methods, they tend to metastasize and lead to death. Moreover, while breast cancer could be an alternative explanation for the breast lesions, it also is rare in men, although most cases are diagnosed in the elderly. In addition, sometimes lesions presenting with calcifications may be related to hemangiomas, trauma-induced ossification of muscle tissue, and in certain locations, although again not in Finnish Lapland, even parasitic infections should be included in the differential diagnosis. On the other hand, gynecomastia, the excess growth of the male mammary glands, may be the most likely explanation to these findings. This typically bilateral condition is common in the elderly men with lowering testosterone serum levels. The condition is normally benign, but may also develop consequently to testicular tumors, a diagnosis that would compound with the findings of testicular calcifications. The tissue mass in gynecomastia does not normally calcify, but in its chronic stage ultimately turns into fibrous tissue, which resists postmortem changes rather well. However, although the condition is fairly common in modern population, so far no cases have been identified in mummies. Interestingly, not even when artistic depictions of the Egyptian king Tutankhamun would have implied that he may have been affected. The presence of pot spine has previously been accepted as a rather reliable evidence of presence of tuberculosis in paleopathological settings when the regional antiquity of the disease is considered. This type of spinal lesion is still not pathognomonic to tuberculosis. 
and the other findings are insufficient to confirm multilocal involvement. Without a positive pathogen DNA analysis, the Vickers diagnosis may never be confirmed. The Vickers possible tuberculosis is relevant even in consideration of the history of the disease in Finland. He might be discussed as the first identified tuberculosis case in Northern Finland, where the first systematically recorded cases date to the 18th century. The disease, however, must have been in the region already earlier. Worldwide, the expansion of tuberculosis and its becoming endemic has been linked to the neolithization and the population density growth. Later on, the early modern urbanization and increasingly cramped living conditions aided a substantial rise in its prevalence. In the Swedish Kingdom, the first skeletal evidence dates to the 12th century and an early 15th century document addresses tuberculosis incidences in local convents. The disease has however been present much earlier as its DNA has been successfully extracted from Neolithic bones in southern Sweden. While the date of tuberculosis' arrival to the Finnish side of the kingdom is unknown, by the Middle Ages the town of Turku was well connected with the towns in the motherland Sweden. Potential paleopathological tuberculosis diagnoses have been made in these skeletal materials excavated in southern Finland dating to the 14th to 19th centuries. The relevant sites are located near the Vickers home in Turku region. Urbanization in Finland took place comparatively late and subsequently the rise in tuberculosis deaths only date to the late 18th century. This trend would not culminate before the 1870s. Still, in the early 20th century, tuberculosis was almost universally contracted during childhood, and the fight against it had clearly been less successful than in the other Nordic countries. The situation during the early 17th century cannot be traced, as the diseases were not yet monitored. Thus, this void in cases is rather due to lack of early documents, but also suitable archaeological skeletal materials rather than actual cases. Only in the mid-18th century onwards can the general picture of the deadly conditions be acquired using the death records. By then, tuberculosis was already a rather common cause of death in the Kemi parish. Unfortunately, this earliest available data coincides with a period of increase in tuberculosis deaths, and the picture provided by it may not represent the situation more than a hundred years before. Furthermore, the mortality caused by tuberculosis is not useful in finding out how common it was. As a biphasic, chronic disease, it often had no time to progress fatal before the other, more acute conditions had claimed the life. Even today, one-third of the human population is infected with tuberculosis. Yet, only in about 10% of them will it develop beyond the asymptomatic primary form.